But uh, for our next speaker, we have uh, John Solly from who has come all the way from College Park, Maryland, right? Or Oh, he works from, okay. Well, he's from the, uni he's coming from the University of Maryland, which is based in College Park, Maryland. But, um, so John and uh, his project, called, which is called the Easier Data Initiative, is one of the Filecoin Foundation for Decentralized Web grantees. Um, and uh, one of the emphasis we have at the foundation is to um, really support the, the, the growth of, like, of just uh, real valuable data sets being stored on the network. Um, like we're not just storing cat photos or things, we're trying to store like real, you know, actual valuable things. And uh, John has like a really great example of like almost like prototype use case of how data is being stored on the network. Um, and uh, how uh, institutions like his, uh, academic institutions, uh, are benefiting and, and uh, benef benefiting from and using this technology uh, in a way that um, has really, really there's a lot of potential to really just transform how science is conducted and research is conducted in a lot of ways with this. So, uh, John, do you want to take it away? Open data from our governments and our institutions is expensive, inaccessible, and not actually that open. And this is really a problem of centralization. One of the issues that occurs is the cost of storage and compute. And it's not just because there's a small group of centralized providers dictating the prices for compute and storage. It's also because different organizations are often using the same data and they're often moving data around when they don't have to. And there's also difficulty in accessing open data, which I'll go into later. And there's lack of censorship resistance. And we really should have, for our publicly funded data sets, they should be open, they should be publicly accessible, and not in the hands of just a few different providers. I work at the Easier Data Initiative at the University of Maryland. We are a very small team of a professor and a few developers. And our mission is to create efficient, accessible, and sustainable infrastructure for extracting data from the world's location-based assets. And we champion the decentralized web as a cheaper, more accessible, and censorship-resistant way to share geospatial data. And it's not just any type of geospatial data, but we've focused on Landsat 9. And if you're not familiar with Landsat 9, it's a satellite that's going around the Earth taking pictures, and as it goes around the Earth and takes pictures, these images are used in a lot of different industries, including disaster response, land use planning, precision agriculture, and, vegeta and vegetation health. Here's an example of uh, a satellite image. Red is showing no vegetation, possibly concrete or dead trees, whereas green is showing uh, healthy vegetation. Um, so, some of the challenges facing our institutions is the price for storage and compute. As I mentioned earlier, there's data silos. Um, redundancy is a really big issue, as there's potentially hundreds of organizations that are pulling lots of data when they don't have to. Um, let's see. And there's also an issue with accessing data. We had a PhD student on our team. He wanted to get access to um, Landsat data. And in order to get kind of bigger access, not just individual tiles, you have to submit an application to USGS. And in this application, you tell them what you're going to do with the data. And it goes to some committee somewhere where it could take days, it could take weeks. And eventually, our PhD student got denied. And what we had to do was sort of like wordsmith this application in order to get um, approval. And so what we've done is we've taken one year of Landsat data, that's about 300 terabytes. And the 300 terabytes is on Filecoin and IPFS. And anyone can access the data without restriction. And I've also um, done some work along with others on my team of 
here is, um, here is some code of a stack catalog, and that's a, a geospatial thing where you can get metadata about Landsat. Traditionally, there's an, a link to S3 where you will access a request or pays bucket. Basically, you're paying Amazon to get access to publicly funded data. And what we've added is why don't we have an IPFS CID there? And when you access through a CID, it can come from anywhere on the IPFS network. Content addressing and data DAOs are another thing we're exploring where we could, where we're really envisioning a world where different universities, different organizations could collaboratively steward data. So we have Landsat data, um, other universities could have other types of data. And by everyone knowing where the data is and also using tools like Bacleau for compute over data, the data doesn't need to move, and we can collaboratively pay for research and make it open and more accessible. We believe that cheaper storage, easier access, certified authenticity, and integration with Web2 technologies, so to, make, to bridge that gap between Web2 and Web3, will make geospatial workflows cheaper, more accessible, and censorship resistant. And maybe we could just step into what would a world look like in a fully decentralized geospatial web. It's a place where um, data is fully available and decentralized, less data silos, and greater trust in democratization of data. Researchers can easily discover and compute on large geospatial data sets. Institutions and governments can collaborate more securely and easily. Citizens can access open data um, without issue. We also encourage anyone who's interested in the decentralized geospatial web or anything that I've spoken about, um, our website, easierdata.org. We've set up a decentralized web working group, and our next meeting is on May 17th. And you can learn more about um, our working group and um, what's going on next on our website. And you will also be able to find us. We're on Twitter at easierdata.org. And I'm here until Saturday if you'd like to talk to me after this um, presentation and any time during this week. Thank you.